do a presentation to to do a sermon. So I figured I'd get on a little early, kind of give you an idea, uh, an idea of what we are doing. Um, so I figured I'd kind of present um, the the sort of the sermon for today that I have. Uh, so <clears throat> my focus today was going to be on unity and revival. Uh, it's one of those things I think that is important. Uh, the scriptures that I have are from Psalms 133, uh, the first part of Psalms 133, and John 17. So if you want to kind of have those as po uh, for a reference point, but <clears throat> unity is actually interesting because it's one of the focal points of uh, what we sort of celebrate with Martin Luther King uh, Jr., uh, who has been a a strong advocate for, for the idea of unity. And I'm going to read you uh, parts of his speech here. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons and former slaves and so former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that four children, my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be made low <clears throat> and the rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Uh, and just to close it, he has the idea uh, in his speech where he talks about the joining of hands and singing of the words, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, I we are free at last. Um, his manifest, his idea was definitely uh, bringing everybody together, unifying everybody together. Uh, I think it's very interesting that we sometimes have a hard time understanding what that means or uh, sometimes we have a hard time uh, just holding on to something uh, as we see people or interact with people. And it is important as godly people that we don't put that barrier, that mask, that wall up to block us away, uh, to hide away. We share our faith. We open our arms to all people. It doesn't matter who they are. And we re represent that and show that. There's also a very important part of all this where the anointing comes as a way of unity. <clears throat> In Psalms 23, uh, verse 5, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Every great move of God has been a hallmark movement that uh, unifies all of us. And the anointing is definitely one of those. Uh, there's a story of these two brothers who uh, were in turmoil and who struggled all the time. They had two farms that were opposite of... Uh, uh, of each other. Uh, they were right next to each other as part of like the traditions of passing down the, the acreage of the farm. Uh, and they have these two houses that they built and there was a creek in the way and they both faced each other. So every morning, even though they were in turmoil and angst and hated each other, uh, they saw each other every morning. That They would never stare or never look. They would always turn away. Um, one day one of the brothers won the lottery and he hired the local carpenter. Now, the local carpenter was also the local pastor. The local, they asked the local carpenter pastor to, uh, the, the, um, the farmer that won that money said, uh, could you build me a wall so I don't have to look at my brother on the other side of the river? Uh, and he said he would agree to work on that for him. Uh, so this man went on a trip with his wife and his family uh, and Shortly after, he came back, and this whole time, uh, the carpenter, the pastor, uh, built a bridge to his brother's property. And when this man came back from his vacation with his family, he saw his brother on the other side of the river, crossed the bridge in open arms and greeted with a hug and conversation and talking, and they reamended again because of that love and that opportunity to unite. But they don't, sometimes that's where we are. We want to put the walls up and we want to create these things and we want to say these things and we want to say, this is who you are, this is where you're at, this is the type. We need to take that wall down. 
we need to take that opportunity to knock that wall and build that bridge and that gap so that we are not struggling with that idea of loving one another in unity. Now, there are many, many things that we do that judge many people, but we need to shrug those all off and take those all the way down. In Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 17, before the dawn comes and the shadows flee away, comes, came back to me, my love, ran like a gazelle on a young stud, stag on the rugs of the mountains. We can work together in that anointing and in that unity in worship and in accord. The importance of this unity in our main verse today in chapter uh, 17 of, verse, uh, of John, it says, uh, in verse 20. So John 17, verse 20 through 23. I am praying not only for those disciples, but also for those who ever believed in me because of the testimony. My prayer for all of them is that they will be one, just as you and I are one in the Father. That just as you are in me, I am in you. <coughs> so they will be with us. And the world will become, will believe you sent me, and I have given them the glory you have given me so that they may be one as we are, and in I in them, and you in me, all being perfect in one. Then the world will know that you sent me, and I will understand that you love them as much as you love me. That is the key to all of this, is that we are unified together under the Lord Jesus Christ and our Father in heaven. As we uh, continue on, there are many, many things that we have problems with, that we struggle with as far as that unified idea. Uh, and I want to kind of close with this. In Ephesians uh, chapter uh, 4, verses 2 and 3, be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Always keep yourselves united in the Holy Spirit and bind yourself together in peace. So I hope you have the opportunity to continue to unify and work together and find a way to uh, glorify God. I think sometimes we get away from those things and we struggle with those things. Um, and we forget. Sometimes we hold on to our own ideas and our own thoughts. But we really need to focus in on God's will, God's thoughts, God's ideas for this world. We know that it's not just in our own space and not just in our own little area, but in the entire world, God has a plan. God has a way of doing things that sometimes we don't understand and we don't know. But as we bond together, unite together as brothers and sisters of this world, we will find a way to glorify God. Not ourselves, but to glorify God. Let us pray. God, thank you for this opportunity again. Uh, we ask that you continue to bless those that are out there uh, that are maybe struggling, having a difficult time. We ask that you continue to be with those this morning uh, that maybe need a little bit of encouragement, uh, maybe a little bit of an opportunity to be uplifted by you. And Lord Jesus, again, we, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in uh, and, and share. Uh, we ask that you also continue to give us an opportunity to worship you and honor you and unite together in one accord with that blessing from that anointing that you have for us. And in your precious name, amen. All right, thank you very much.